Okay. So uh, we, let's start with uh, some announcements. Please don't skip the announcements. They're very, very important. Uh, so for those who missed the Portrait Studio sale, which was held for two weeks, I really wanted to extend it for you guys. I really wanted to extend it. But I, um, I'm so sorry about my voice today. It's very stuffy. I feel very sick. Um, uh, but I really wanted to extend the sale, but I, rest assured, there will be another one. It's not as big as this one. This is the biggest one of the year. I only have two of them. The next one that'll be this big is in March, uh, possibly next year. I'm so sorry. We can't really afford to have it at 50% off for like longer than two weeks. Just by the way, we've you know, roughly calculated everything, but we do have a Christmas sale for anyone who wants to buy it for Christmas or gift it for Christmas. Um, I am still working on some promos. My latest painting will be up as a promo for Portrait Studio. If you're still need, if you still need convincing on why you should own it, um, what it can offer you, I'm trying my best to use it throughout my process to show you that it is worth it. Um, and we put so much energy into it. And if you want it for Christmas, if you want to gift it for Christmas, uh, December first. Um, towards the 20th of December, um, maybe, maybe up until Christmas itself, um, I will possibly have another sale. It won't be almost 50, uh, like this one, the price has gone back up to $80, um, uh, so it'll, it'll probably be something around 30% off or 40% off max, um, maybe not 40, uh, for the holiday season. So if you want it, you just have to wait like a little over a month, um, to, uh, to get it again. So... Uh, that's just some, uh, you know, just something to keep it fair for anyone who missed the, you know, who just joined the channel and who missed it. I have updated and repinned the assignments for this month, the challenges due around Halloween for both the creepy creature design and the character environment integration design themed around pole vaulting. Um, uh, please have a look at both. You have two different kinds of challenges. One is an environment uh, for a, creep, a creature design that is all about wickedness and evil creatures but you have to make sure that you um and, and integrate them into their habitat so the theme of these challenges is that they are all about character environment integration so design a creature in their natural habitat the kicker here is to keep it creepy while designing the creature to reflect their natural habitat be it a swamp cave or forest habitat design your wicked creature to reflect the needs climate and evolution of their habitat with their anatomy and design Try connecting your creature to an already existing anatomy group and branching out from there. So choose a creature that you already, like a bat or a snake, and then advance after that. Uh, with added magical elements, um, such as a magical bioluminescence or an added fog element, as we see in the Dementors design. So what I love, love, love about the Harry Potter lore is that they call the Dementors creatures rather than a people's. Um, I love that. I love that they are creatures that breed and all of that. Like, they're all creepy and they have this weird social creature order and they're just really nasty creatures that are just not born evil or evil in themselves but they are made out of darkness and feed off of people's spirits that's what I mean by a creepy creature I don't mean a bat with glowing eyes um, and that's where you stop I mean really just you know explore your imagination you have 15 days or so left to do this um, so it really is a great opportunity for you to flex some uh, anatomy studies out for creature uh, design. We're going to talk about all habitat stuff, sinking different elements of concepts. So it's bone structure with uh, speed or hunting style with uh, armor or skin or hide or fur with uh, function. Um, is it blind? Can it see? How does it smell? All of that stuff is still... You're still responsible for the scientific and biological element in the design. It's not just happy-go-lucky, I'm going to put a sparkle here and a little a little a scale pattern here and that's where you stop. Think about the function of the animal. If it doesn't make any sense, it's not going to look good on film. Um, and then you have the character environment integration challenge. So it's themed around pole vaulting and I took a couple pictures from Atlantis to show you what I mean. Characters whose uh, culture and lifestyle revolves around pole vaulting in order to hunt or for pr transportation purposes around a high altitude landscape. It can be a sky landscape, it can be an, an, an underground cave uh, underworld landscape, but it has to be something where the rocks are too high for any footwork or any kind of walking. It has to have some kind of pole vaulting element to 
um, uh, you know, trek through these long gaps between each high altitude rock, uh, for each high climbing rock. Okay, so these are some screenshots. It took me forever to screenshot for you guys. Um, they're a little bit hard to see because it is a dark scene. Um, if you have any questions about these two challenges, please ask me. There might not even be another challenge until next year, January. Um, I'm going to revamp my Patreon, so I'm going to be very, very uh, busy with that. The new, uh, the new tier in Patreon that I'm going to be adding is private tutoring tier. Um, at my old prices uh, for the added tier, so... Um, it's going to be like a limit four-person, five-person room, and we all critique each other um, and paint together. Uh, so that's, I'm going to be very, very busy formulating that. I might not have enough time to host another challenge. But if you guys have an idea for a Christmassy, wintry theme challenge, it can be another creature design, but for a, a, a tundra habitat or a northern habitat, just to keep things, you know, lively and festive and cheesy, you know, as we do. <clears throat> and then we have um, the sad truth that Google Plus might be shutting down come next August. They might start shutting it down as we go. It might just be like a trickle effect. And then Google Plus might shut down as soon as tomorrow. If something like this happens, if we have time, you know, to figure this out, I'm not sure how, I'm, you know, they're going to shut down Google Plus Hangouts as well. So that's going to be a big just pain in the butt for my tutoring. Uh, but um, if Google Plus just shuts down randomly, and this is a straight up like a warning, uh, an announcement, a, a, a precaution, remember that I have my Facebook group. To get it, go to the isdirect.com website and click on the little Facebook group and join, like, I don't know what you do to join a group on Facebook. You just like it, I think, and you are given um, updates on it. We will start to... Uh, host everything through Facebook, meaning that if you have work to critique, you can send it to me on Facebook. In the meantime, we will try to in introduce a tab or add it to the community tab where you can upload your pictures and critique each other. Um, it might be a third party thing, but if for some reason Google Plus shuts down as soon as tomorrow, as soon as next week, with no announcement, with no warning, just go straight to Facebook and send me your work comment on my wall like actually go to my wall and submit your painting um that's just another way to upload your work and stay connected to the whole istabrak thing um all right and that's it let's get started oh and if, please join patreon if you can <laughs> all right let's get started um so character design lineups actually there were questions um yes there are gpu recommendations please read them read through them. Uh, the Mac release is imminent. Oh yeah, so I had some updates on the announcement. For those who missed the Portrait Studio sale, there will be a there will also be an upcoming Portrait Studio update, which includes on-screen buttons to rotate, zoom, and pan. That was a very big one. A lot of people have trouble running the camera on Portrait Studio. Uh, you will have on-screen buttons to do this for you, as well as, as well as tablet accessibility, added safe prompts, and a histogram. So you'll be able to control Z and you'll have save prompts so you don't lose any information in your save uh, files. The Mac release for Porsche Studio is also imminent. Keep an eye out. If you're waiting for Mac release, it will be available very, very soon. It may not have some of the advanced high, uh, lighting, but it will still have the posable hand model, the figure, all the busts, all the shapes, everything. And it's running on a small, tiny MacBook. So I'm sure for those who have more powerful Macs, as powerful as Mac can get, um, you'll probably be able to run a uh, really, really high, high frame rate and um, minimal lag. It is an engine after all. It is a big uh, lighting studio. All right, that's it. <clears throat> uh, the problem with these character design, uh, this, this character design layout is it's not charming. Um, something about it is a little bit too uniform. And one of the biggest, well, I know what it is. One of the biggest issues is that your the way you distributed height doesn't really seem to be convincing me each character is their field. <clears throat> Let's say I was a short woman. I finally learned my craft in herbology or in, I don't know, with the chains around her boobies and whatnot. Maybe that is a religious thing. It's not more of a prostitution thing. I feel like this is something... Of female trying to lure in men would wear, the little body chain. Um, but anyway, considering that she may be a, a, an eastern dwelling, I love the, I love the beads around the little, uh, the, the knot here. 
and she just learned her craft late in late in life. She's older now. She's a master of herbology or whatever witchcraft or good witchcraft that she does or healing or or shamanism or her her related healing or something like that. I wouldn't really call I wouldn't really think that I grew up with this titanic body. I wouldn't really have been drawn towards the academic or the maternal academic um, or like the, the female knowledge or feminine knowledge that let's just call it um, nurturing maternity all of that if I had the body of Brienne of Tarth I think I would actually go into combat I would have gone into some kind of something um, and and just taken advantage of my massive body and found a way to build a lifestyle around it so you as the person, <clears throat> you're basically the god here. You're creating your characters, you're creating your people. Why did you think it was necessary to give her height? A height so tall, she almost is a, a towering over everyone just like this masculine dude is. So the only character you have here who is short is her. And she's a snake charmer, dancer type, a prostitute or feminine character or something. Um, I don't like saying prostitute. I really don't have a good word for it, like a temptress or an entertainer. I mean, her shirt's about to come off, so she's a prostitute. I don't know. But her height seems okay, but that's the only character here who you've explored their height. And it seems like you explored their height because the reference you had was short, and I feel like you're tracing over your references or copying them very closely. The hand here is just a sign that you've completely collapsed in anatomy knowledge. When you get to the hand, um... You know, so I, I'm starting to think that you're working a little too closely with your references, and that's why you didn't independently explore the height of the character. So I'm going to shrink her. Any maternal characters come from tropes. Any, any of these characters come from tropes. And to shrink her would provide us with that believable body type that would say, she's not the tallest woman, she's not the skinniest woman, she's not the most beautiful woman, she's not the youngest woman. But she is very, very versed in all things academic in the field of um, midwifery or she does have 10 sons or she's the, she's the wife of a shaman. She's, the, she's a, a, a matriarch of some kind. So I'm just sagging the boobies. The bigger the boobies get, the closer to the ground. Remember that, boys. A or B cup or, or, or go home. <laughs> I'm just jealous of big boob girls. Um, so I'm just sagging these to the ground. That hand needs to look like it's actually sitting on the surface. And I'm trying to do that here by lifting the fingers. The forearms usually get skinny even in chunky people. Okay, and if she's leaning on one leg, it means the other leg is kind of rested. And she's tucked out a hip. Maybe she has a bad hip. This needs to look like it's sitting on the ground. So, yeah, it might have offended a couple of you here to say um, that the woman needs to be short because she's maternal. That's, you know, the fact that you're offended by this is probably your problem. It's not an art director's problem. It's not the viewer's problem. If you're an artist who believes all women should be tall and towering, then your characters are going to look pretty uniform and boring. For a character that, that is older, bigger, um, is just not necessarily an athlete. She's more of the like the mental mental um, or, or maternal knowledge, or, or female or feminine intelligence, than which is an actual thing, which is like a more emotional intelligence, I guess we can call it. Then I'm not gonna give I'm not gonna waste time giving her an athletic body type. And she did have an athletic body type. She looked like she wielded like she looked like she she did shot put when she was in her younger days probably even now all right so i've shrunken her stature and i'm going to widen it as well okay so she's nice and short where else do we see this remember the the grandma from inuyasha i loved her so much every time there was something scary they just went back to the town and and the sweet little grandma was, would help them she was so sweet but she was short but she was still the matriarch and she was the daughter or the sister of of the girl the the spiritual lady um 
Okay, so that's what I mean. There's specific tropes, but the but the girl, I forget what her name is, Kagome? I forget what her name is. Um, but um, she was very tall, very beautiful, in her own little trope. And when she was living, she was a baby, so that doesn't really count to compare the two. They didn't live in the same timeline. Inuyasha is one of my favorite animes. <laughs> you can call me a weeb if you want. I don't give a shit. Um, so... That is very, very important to remember, that you have specific tropes, and those tropes come from body types, and you can't mess with them, or else things look a little bit weird. She can be the same height as her. She can be taller. She can be shorter. But right now, it seems like they have a pretty good balance. For this character, just generally females being so tall in your, in your world, I really don't understand it. Um... She can be a warrior. She can be a warrior or, or a uh, bodyguard of some kind or, a, you know, some kind of strong, feminine, athletic body type. Her head's a little small. Her torso is massive compared to her head. That's probably because you had a headdress on her, and that headdress was kind of, um, damn it, was kind of taking up the space you thought was n needed for a head size. So you need to increase that head size a little bit. I'm so sorry about my sniffles. I really was careless last night. I should sleep early. It's not good to stay up late. Don't stay up late. <laughs> When you get older, you just don't stay up late as easy. I used to be able to paint and t into 5 a.m., wake up looking like, looking fresh as fuck. And then I started, you know, getting older. See how small the head was? My God. And, um, yeah, I couldn't do that anymore. All right, so we have all of this. Okay, she can be tall. She can be a towering lady. I don't understand why she has a mustache. I don't know if it's a mustache. I don't know if this is a male. I think this is a female. If it's a male, you did it all wrong because you have the body. I love these beads on the ties. Um, because the body type is wider towards the bottom. If you wanted it to be a male, you did, you did it all the wrong direction. So I'm just going to make it a female for now. She can stay tall. She can stay very, very tall, but she has to be a little bit more spindly. Again, why would she be drawn to the clergy equivalent of this this universe if she is going, or a nun, or whatever she is? Um, why would she be drawn to it if she had the body of Achilles, but a female? You just have to think in the lives of these characters. Why are the bodies that they are given to, that they are given, are given, why are they given to them? Is it because they're more intellectually inclined? Did the gods want them to be heroes or did they want them to be thinkers? So I can make her tall. I can keep her tall, but I'm going to make her spindly and skinny. Okay, so she can be tall, but she's not going to have the girth of the, of the body type. So look at her body type, her upper body torso compared to this athlete. All right, and the male can be left exactly as he is. There's nothing wrong with him. It's just that now he has the stature that belongs to him. You can have tall female characters, but they can't all be the same t the same length. Now look at them all compared to each other. Doesn't that make a little bit more sense? You can make her chunkier and bigger. In fact, the chunkier, the better. The skinnier, the better. The more exaggerated, the better. This guy, he kind of looks like a squire, really. He doesn't look like a hero who'd be allowed to carry a saber. So what I'm going to do is just exaggerate his chest size. I'm going to shrink his head at the top. The reason why we shrink the head is because we're trying to perpetuate the belief that guys with, with brawn have no brain. So he doesn't really need much use of his head. And I, I am witness to this. <laughs> I have seen very, very strong men with the most pinheaded shaped heads. <laughs> All right, I'm going to just give him a wider mouth, smaller eyes. He doesn't really have to be all that handsome. Ugly can be handsome for a man. And there are just a couple of rules that you learn that you can't break. If you want to show that he's proud, raise one eyebrow, lower the other in disinterest. All right. 
and I'm going to lower the upper lip size. Don't want it to be too uh, too baby like or handsome, but he's still very very cute. He's still a very handsome boy. Small ears, long floppy ears make him look like a dork. So remember that if you have to paint a dork. Like that funny little baboon, monkey, ape, uh, chimpanzee in uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes or Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, latest one. Um, this is the funny one, had big ears, big eyes. He looked ridiculous, but compare him to the way they designed Caesar in the Planet of the Apes. And um, he has more of a, of a very athletic ear shape, even though he's, a, he's an ape. So before, see how much like a boy he looked, and after, it looks more like a seasoned veteran or a man. I'm just going to increase the size of his head because changing the shape decreased the size. <clears throat> okay. All right, so we have a nice balance here, um, or let's say an imbalance between all of these body types. I really think you should rethink what you referenced for the athletic female bodyguard type a character, I feel like she's a bodyguard under disguise, or the bodyguard that goes everywhere the princess goes, or like a female um, warrior in the court. She's definitely not a commoner because of what she's wearing. When you world build, you have to build classes. When you build classes, a badly built world is where everyone's wearing sashes and, and, and beads and jewelry. Uh, that's a badly made world when you're world building. When you are designing a, an entire universe of limitations, um, when, design, when designing an entire world, you're designing an entire world of limitations. The limitations in body type, limitations in, in class, limitations in power, and that's where all of your struggles come from, and struggles make stories. So if everyone has the most equal body type and everyone's wearing beads and everyone has nice colored clothing that is fully dyed and fully looking... Um, vibrant colors and, and, and wonderful fabrics. You're talking about characters from a world where everyone is equal and it's just some kind of like utopia that doesn't exist. And that's the kind of designs that we see in really badly made um, strategy RPG games where all the characters are so nicely dressed and everyone's so pretty and it's everyone's so kawaii. And <laughs> that's how you know they're badly made. There was no real struggle in, in, involved in the design of the world. Okay, so any questions at all about these changes? Does anyone disagree? Struggles make stories, exactly. Warrior, tribe, diplomat. Um, so speaking of vibrancy, I think the colors here look great. The reason why I said she's not uh, low class is because of the blue. She seems like a poor dancer. Uh, not the richest woman, but she has some jewelry. Look at that gold. So I think you may want to add some kind of vibrancy to her sash to match that because she's wearing poor colors, let's just say, quote unquote, poor colors. She looks like she's a religious representative, not wearing the most expensive stuff, uh, but definitely all covered up, very religious, and usually religious characters or representatives don't walk around with gold on them unless they're uh, the, the a royal diplomat or, I mean, the royal, um, the royal uh, religious representative or the royal nun or something. Um, his colors look great. He's a decorated warrior. Um, she's got some gold on her. I would probably change that to bronze. Uh, just keep that struggle system visible. <clears throat> Who can't stop laughing? Why, why are you guys laughing so much? <laughs> uh, well, rock. When I wake up from late sleep, I get greeted by my heart. Rapid beating. <laughs> um... Stream died briefly. I'm sorry if it dies. There, there is a bit of a wind problem here right now. It happens every October, so it might just completely fall. Uh, from left to right, uh, warrior, tribe, diplomat, vendel, dancer, house mom, fortune teller. Mm -hmm. I would say religious... Um, like a high-ranking religious nun or religious representative because of the high hat. Um, I would say more of a matriarchal uh, shaman or spiritual healer. Um, there is this anime who, that I love. 
All right, and it has this character who is also um, like a religious healer, matriarch, beautiful, beautiful character writing. This is her right here. Um, so she kind of has the staff. She's got big old short body. She's got the, the headdress or any other significant way she's dressed herself to represent herself as spiritually awoken up or or wearing the the, the the jewelry of her tribe or what her ma previous matriarchs taught her beautiful anime if anyone's interested in watching something for the winter time um then i would say poor street uh dancer or i would say um like a brothel dancer and then uh royal guard and royal guard I wouldn't say diplomat. A diplomat is dressed very similarly to a religious representative in that they wear very long robes that show off their richness and their stature and their dignity in front of other uh, ambassadors or um, diplomatic representatives. <clears throat> um, can we get some space on the left and right so the characters don't feel like they're squished into the canvas? Um, yeah, definitely, you guys. I mean, do I have to do it? <laughs> All right, I'll do it. Um, with so much attitude. Oopsie. Whoa. There we go. Are you happy? Wasting my time. <laughs> I'm such a crabby old fool. I don't know why you have this like gray to purple gradient. Just keep it clean. Okay, so before, all seem to be of the same height and body type. Small changes, but they come from really, really massive concepts. All right. Okay, so onward to this dude. So this is a really, really beautiful like, I don't even know what to call it. What do you call these things? Like a something that ends with a lith or... Or, or, or uh, Colossus or something beautiful. And the thing that's ruining it all is this cheesy 90s Iron Giant ripoff eye. It's completely humanized the character, which should not really be humanized. Look at its scale. It's bigger than mountains. It has no business having cute blue eyes. What the hell are we going to do? Have a conversation with it? If we have a conversation with it, our eyes are going to pop uh, like little jelly beans, and our ears will, will turn to mush. They'll actually melt. All right? So this thing has no business having eyes, okay? It's a massive spiritual star night guardian creature wandering the depths. What the fuck is this guy doing waving at him? <laughs> What the hell is he going to do when he catches his attention? Are we just going to have a conversation with him with all, all his senses intact? No, what you've done here is you've established a universe wherein these kinds of creatures exist. I imagine creatures just like this were designed by some crazy super-sized planet-sized architect that live in Saturn right now or, or on some kind of planet. All right, this little dude here, this is just bad storytelling. This little dude has no business waving at him. Maybe it's somebody meditating. Maybe someone's sitting down meditating and they are seeing this creature here pass by them in their mind's eye. And uh, it's just a beautifully made form study. It's very advanced. You got some inconsistencies like what are these big balloon shaped satchel bags, stink bag looking things, and then you have all this massive neck and spinal technology. I, I just don't think this fits in there. They're two very, very encountering body types, whereas you have clustered detail and then open detail. It's, it's just two, they're two against each other. You've also interrupted the beautiful gesture line here. I don't think we should be worried about muscle or how this creature functions. I think this gesture line of the moon is very, very important to keep uh, in, uh, intact. You can have that little bag here, the little sack, but keep everything else consistent. You seem to have a second moon that's coming out of nothing, so maybe it merges into this. You don't have the inside of that moon visible. 
maybe it's got another one. I don't think you should even have this moon because look at what it looks like. It looks like the moon's shape is like that, not like that. Because you don't have anything here indicating this moon is, like, even if I adjust my navigator, it'll still look off. See that? Um, and then there's this, the, 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 the fade. So I'm just going to get the atmosphere color. And depending on what the light source is in this entire scene, it could be a moon just sitting, uh, shining across a mountain, and we're seeing only some of the top. So the mountain that this guy, this half, this, this guy is in, and this half of the hemisphere is casting a shadow. The side of this hemisphere has a massive mountain that's casting a shadow, and that same shadow might be consistently cast across. Maybe it's just the horizon line. It's not a cast shadow. It's just the edge of the horizon casting shadows. And you only have the tops, the very, very top, toppity tops, catching light. Okay, and so I'm going to go to the previous layer and get a nice shadow color. Another thing that you need to do is just completely drown everything down into what's happening is that you've placed the brightest objects so high in this in this canvas either you shrink the moon down or you darken this top half because something is just leading our eyes up and out of the canvas and that's not that's not mature storytelling I mean a lot of your storytelling was immature the big blue sparkly cheesy anime shapeshifter transformer Gundam eyes and then you had the guy waving <laughs> <laughs> it was very, very delicately drawn. It wasn't even, um, uh, you know, like it was a stick figure anatomy. So you need to be a little bit more mature with your storytelling, bro. But beautiful job everywhere else. Okay, so before, after, and then the beautiful little cast shadow. I'm going to try to use my own brush for this. Oops. Just like that. See how like all the unnecessary anatomy was drowned away as needed? Any questions at all about this? Anyone disagree? Another thing you can do to kind of just ease up on that excessive detail, I'm going to use my really strong smudge and I'm just going to smudge away at the top just to show a little bit of glare just to show where the moon is because at the end of the day it's just not sitting well with me either shrink him or redo the moon somehow maybe make it lean away or raise some vertical altitude here in the canvas do whatever you got to do so that our eyes are not leading away and the reason why I'm decreasing edge by using the smudge brush here and this is the really strong one this is the the 150 I mean this is the uh, number five um, is uh, because the focal point is now recentered. We don't have a sharp, bright edge up here towards no one cares uh, margin in a canvas. This is the no one cares margin, <laughs> okay? No one cares. We, we couldn't be bothered less about this edge here. There shouldn't be any information out here. Should be all really, really just unimportant, unnecessary detailing out here really not important ob no, no important objects are placed in this area so when we correct all of this and look at the before so before those eyes were so cheesy the way you drew them the way that they were kind of sad and cute you need to look more into the way they design Godzilla for instance or the way they design any kind of like eyes that like the way in Clash of the Titans, they design the eyes of the Gorgon, not the Gorgon, what am I saying? Um, the, uh, the Hydra, um, uh, uh, what's it called? Kraken, the Kraken. Uh, the eyes were so tiny and the, the size of the creature was so huge. They designed these really, really weird looking eyes. And then there was this something recent, I forget what it was. Maybe it was a cla attack of the Titans or Attack on Titan, um, uh, the way they designed the eyes of some of the monsters, 
I don't remember, uh, but they have these really, really, God, which one was it? Just tiny eyes, tiny, inhuman, dragon-esque looking eyes, not robotic looking eyes. Okay, so I do agree that the second shoulder spire does mess with the silhouette of the moon. I disagree about the little guy. You killed his happiness. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's got this, <laughs> he's got this mountainous, like the, the top of this moon is probably on the, 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 the second last atmospheric level of the earth. Look at this tiny little mountain here in the distance compared to him. And this is something in the distance. When you get close up to this mountain, this mountain is, is, is a mountain. It's not just a tiny little hill. A hill is like one of these little bumps here. That's a mountain if you can see it in the horizon line. And this guy is going up so high. We don't even have buildings or have never had anything go up this high other than planes or, or something. I don't know. He's just really, really high up. You can probably see him from space. Okay? This guy, when somebody sees someone like this, they don't just wave hi. Hello. They don't just wave. Look how happy he looked. <laughs> it just was not good storytelling. What's he saying hi to? And he wasn't even rendered past, past stick person level. So it just comes to think that you painted this, you finished it, and you wanted to add someone in the foreground. You weren't really sure what to do. Them meditating or, or just seeing them spiritually kind of reflects the peace behind all of this. And that will help you bring in more of a storytelling maturity. And then finally, I have... this suggestion fading everything in the background off to be this dark um, and then reintroducing the contrast if you need it with the background still being um, this light I mean this dark shit so everything gets kind of tucked away in the distance with some fade Okay, do you see that? Do you see how suddenly there's just this beautiful level of atmosphere compared to before where you had just a bit too much of everything happening at the same time. And you can go ahead and bring back all of the contrast you need by using the shadow, the, the, the highlights, not the shadow half of the contrast. Okay, and that's kind of how you shade objects in the distance. You can keep their light contrast, not their shadow contrast. If he's friendly, he doesn't, his mind is just so outside of our own physical realm. If he wanted to talk to us, God bless him, he couldn't, this creature, this friendly giant. This isn't a giant, this is a, this is a planet. Okay, you need to understand that this is what's bothering me is that the artist here is having this irresponsible way of using scale. You have to understand the scale you're painting here. You don't want to be showing this in front of a lecture hall. I mean, you just did. Uh, and oh yeah, well, this just happened to you. <laughs> you did just get, you know, um, uh, so you don't want to find yourself in a situation where someone is questioning your scale and you have no answer. You're just dumbfounded because you yourself had no idea the scale you were, you were aiming at. Let me keep some of the original contrast. Okay, so you need to understand the scale you just depicted here. It's not good for your portfolio to show this level of disregard for, I mean, it's not negative disregard, it just means you have no ability to recognize it when you're using it for scale. Okay, so the before, those bubbly little sacks were just in the way, and the eyes were just sad and annoying, and they were just hanging out, they had no business needing to see. This was a this creature is like the pet of a god. It's not something that we need to be worried about humanizing. It's so past. Its scale is so inhuman. To add eyes is to make it into a caricature anime figurine. Okay? I hope you understand what I'm saying. Maybe the little guy sees big old planet creatures all the time. 
Friendly or not, if I saw that creature, I wouldn't want to get his attention. <laughs> um, just remember, it's scale plus creature. And I think we talked about that in the previous critique as well. The scale is a big thing at this point. You're characterizing with size. So when you characterize with size, you either limit or provide options. So your options are de determined by scale. Characterization options are determined by scale. Write that back to me. <clears throat> yeah. Um, maybe the little guy sees big old planets all the time. Um, progen progenitus. Magic the Gathering card. Images. Oh, I love this card. I love this card. It's so beautiful. Protection from everything. If progenitus would be put into a graveyard from anywhere to reveal progenitus and shovel it into its owner's library instead. Holy God, I need to buy this. Oh my gosh, look how expensive it is. Oh my God, you have to build a quad deck to play it. <laughs> Hydra avatar, protection from everything. Holy cow. What an amazing card. Okay, <laughs> need to buy that card. Um, character options are determined by scale. Characterization options. Um, I don't know, maybe mosquitoes are trying to say hello to us and we keep ignoring them. <laughs> um, all right, uh, moving on. So this flower, it's a very, very simple um, fix for this. The artist who uploaded this said, is the background too dark? No, it is not dark enough, my friend. What you're saying here is that you've you've made a jack-o'-lantern fl a flower, which is so adorable, by the way, and you've you've you're, you're considering whether or not to bring them into a dark scene. You're do you how if you were to take a picture of a candle, would you go outside to take a picture of it? All right, so candle flame. Images. Let's see what photographers and videographers think. Uh, oh, nighttime scene. Nighttime scene. Not the best scene. Not the best environment. Only one result so far where it's in a daytime or, or bright environment. It's probably a... I don't even know if this is an image or a 3D model. The majority of them is at night because that's the best way to show the luminescence and vibrance of such a tiny, warm, little, delicate, sharp flame. It's so beautiful, and it looks best when it is dark. So whenever you're dealing with glowing scenes like this, you want to bring in a dark light environment. Jack-o'-lantern. Dark scene. Dark, dark. The best pictures of jack-o'-lanterns are taken at night. So you can actually see the glow. Best one so far. <laughs> okay. Did someone seriously sculpt this? Come on. All right. So you weren't going dark enough if you really wanted this to, to take effect. So I darkened the whole theme, the, uh, darkened the whole environment with levels, and I'm going in now. with the silhouette required on the jack-o'-lantern. And I'm just gonna do the rest with burn tool. <clears throat> Excuse me. The outline is kind of breaking up the scene, so I'm just going to get rid of some of the outline. You don't need an outline, you just need edges. I know it's weird to not want, to not do outlines but you really, really don't need them. You just need the edges and the inside of the teeth. And a little bit more volume on each component, like on each uh, column of the... <clears throat> pumpkin. If there's fire coming out, if there's fire catching, look if it's catching fire anywhere, you want to find where those hot spots of the flame are. 
We just want to make them come out. Maybe some cast shadows on the ground beneath. And then your texture is the other problem. The way you depicted the, the flame, the way you depicted the pumpkin, they're all really, really unreferenced or they're not accurate to what it is you're trying to represent. Flame is more smooth, is more randomized, where this looks like a head of hair, which is okay, I guess it is a head of hair. You need to remember the different anatomy gets components of a flame. You got the dark, sharp parts where the smoke comes from on the outside, and you've got the hottest center, and then you've got the smoke itself. So some areas here get pretty dark. They're like the outline of each flame. It's got like a dark base. So this is what we kind of need, and then we've got the glare or the glow. Oops. The problem here is that you have an internal shadow coming out and you have an external uh, light source um, on top of it. So you've got the silhouette of the face, which should actually be this dark. And then you've got the flame on top, which illuminates everything nearby it. So I don't care about the, the, the pumpkin at this point. I'm not thinking about the object. I'm, I'm the subject. I'm thinking about the object. Because if you think about the object, then you'll actually create realistic light sources. But if we go back to... This is all too bright. I mean, he still looks cute. I mean, you still carried a lot of the face out this way. He still looks very cute. I think you have to rethink where you place the highlights on the leaves. I think leaves, I think they should be a little bit more bent like that. And then you have no cylindrical lights on the stem. So half the stem would be in shadow and the top would be in light. So this makes a little bit more sense. And if it's too dark for you, then we can bring in a bit more contrast. But you're thinking about a flame at the moment, and this is how you should be thinking about it. This is how you make something look realistic, by forgetting about the subject. Forget that it was something you sketched. You worship your lines. Stop worshiping your lines, because your lines are stopping you from addressing exactly what it is that's required to pull this off as a realistic depiction. And color dodge. This is looking better and better. The more contrast we bring in, because that's what it is when you take a picture of a flame. Um, where is it? Where's our reference? I guess I closed it. When you take a picture of a flame, that's what it is that you're doing. You're using contrast to your advantage, black background and a glowing object. And then you can start having fun with some details. So the inside of each geometric like um, form or the native shapes coming through, you can start sh showing those off a little bit. Okay, so we've got the inside here, and then the teeth, you can start showing those off. You can start showing where the glare stops. So you can start making some edges and cleaning up your form study. See how now we have the inside of the teeth? You can keep going with this kind of, you know, back and forth anatomy thing. You're actually bringing in some form anatomy at the moment. You don't have the bottom parts. I mean, it does make him look cuter when he doesn't have the bottom pieces.
and then do the exact same thing, the insides of each pyramid. And if you don't know where the insides of each pyramid is, then you have to stop everything you're doing and start doing some form studies. I'm sorry. I know it's the something that nobody wants to hear, but if you don't know where these go, it means that your form language altogether, along with your understanding of light environments, is all really, really lacking. Another thing that can really happen inside is some subsurface scattering. That'll bring out some more. And subsurface just sits under the surface towards areas that are in shadow. You can't bring in subsurface scattering on a highlighted area. It's already illuminated. It doesn't make sense. We don't need subsurface scattering. It's, it's there. It's doing its thing. So you have subsurface scattering just hanging out towards the darker half. And then the brightest little area, which is some more of his little hairs, his little fiery peach fuzz, is just kind of also revealed by some subsurface scattering towards the bottom of his head. Careful not to connect this flame with this flame because it'll start to look like an outline. So we're just trying to show some peach fuzz. And uh, still the texture is a little hairy for the flame. A flame doesn't have fur micro texture. A flame is a flame. It's a, just this consistent thing. We don't really know what a flame is. It's just a constant chemical reaction of energy and heat and emanation of light. It's just beautifully soft. It's, it's just a lot of light. It's what it is. You're getting really close to light. Light is a soft texture. If light had any texture brush, it would be soft brush. And you can make some aspects of the flame a little hairier towards the end when you have those little wisps, but the entire body of the flame should be a little less uh, intense. Subsurface is under every surface if it's translucent enough. When we see subsurface is a different situation. Subsurface as, an, as a thing is underneath stuff when it's translucent because the light penetrated the surface and started hanging out and chilling under the surface. When we see it, we only see it when it's dark enough to see it. And it's dark enough to see it when it's in shadow. <clears throat> Would there be any illumination on the floor? Absolutely. They'd be illumination everywhere where there isn't a cast shadow. So this leaf, that leaf, all the way around. He's just a Christmas tree. Have you guys ever seen the light that a Christmas, Christmas tree casts everywhere in every which direction? Okie dokie. So yes, you needed it to go way darker. I'd, I'd, I'd go ham. I'd just be like, bam. I think that looks a lot cuter, a lot more intense. But this is where you were before. You were so afraid of your lines. You didn't know what scene you were representing. You didn't really know. You were too cautious. If you really wanted to make it a scene, you had to go dark. And that maturity, that, that kind of familiarity comes from form studies, repeated form studies. That's it for today. I'm not going to be able to look at this. I'm so sorry if this was one of yours. Thank you everyone for joining. Please make sure that you guys are uh, taking a look at the challenges for this month. Um, and uh, for anyone interested in a portrait studio sale, there's going to be one in December. Uh, so if you missed this one, I'm sorry that you did. It's the biggest one that we're going to have. We're not going to have one as big uh, for a while, maybe until March next year. Uh, so go to istabrak.com for now. Go to Google Plus to submit your stuff. Um, and if for some reason Google Plus shuts down over the next couple weeks or months um, without warning, go to Facebook. Go to my Facebook group and post your stuff there on my wall and I'll critique as I see them. And you guys can still critique each other on my wall if you post there. So we're going to try to get everybody here on Facebook. Um, I'm going to try to make some videos about it, some announcements, and try to move over into Facebook. I know Facebook is not ideal. It compresses. Um, it, it's just a big troublemaker. But until we find a better option, until we develop a community tab specifically on my website, 
Um, and if you're interested in this month's challenge or next month's challenge, the Critique Hour Meet, if you're interested in seeing uh, the progress for my latest painting, which I'll give you guys a little preview for. It's, um, it's not done. It's got a lot of problems. But if you guys are interested in seeing the progress for this painting, you can join as an apprentice. I'll be submitting the entire process and a commentary on it, what I did, what went behind it, um, the story behind it. And I usually assign paintings just like this for patrons, um, as well as the texture studies behind them and um, all the different ways to prepare for a painting is going to be the theme of next, actually this month's um, uh, time lapse video. So I upload one personal piece every month, or I try to. This last month I couldn't. So I uploaded a how to uh, form study cylinders video. And the assignment for apprentices this month is an interior form study, uh, interior room form study. Uh, so you have a window on every wall and we're going to be talking about which light to track. Uh, what light was the first light, second light, third light, um, and bounce. Uh, we're just going to be talking about a lot of stuff uh, in the apprentice group. So if you guys are interested in that content. It's only available for apprentices. If you're interested in supporting me on Patreon and what I do, you can join on lower tiers. Even the $1 tier is welcome for anyone who just wants to support from the background. I'm aiming for a thousand patrons. I don't know when that's going to happen. That'd be really cool if I got a thousand patrons. Um, and uh, that's it. Thank you everyone for joining. I'm sorry I can't take questions today. My voice is feeling very, very weak. I'll see you guys maybe in tonight's After Hours. I want to finish this painting as soon as possible. If you don't join as a patron and you still want to see the process, even a longer version, hours and hours and hours of it, you can still join in the After Hours. They're public. Um, I don't wait. I don't take educational questions in the After Hours. It's just my personal time with my friends, but um, I might be in the mood to answer questions, so you can just join in then. If you want to have some fun, you can just join as well. Thank you everyone for watching. I'll see you guys on Thursday. I'll, I'll try my best to make it for this Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Bye guys.